Hallelujah. How's everybody tonight? Are you blessed and highly flavored? Hallelujah. This is the night the Lord has made, and we will rejoice because we have a choice. Turn to your neighbor and tell them you have a choice. See, you have a free will. You have the will to choose. I want to share something with you. I was leaving a store, walking to my car in the parking lot, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon me, and he said, Guy, look around. And I began to look around, thinking he was going to show me something. And he said to me, you live and breathe and have your being in me. And what upholds everything of all creation is me. He said, I am life. And in my presence is life. He said, anything out of my presence loses its free will. And everything in my presence has a free will. He said, when people go to hell, they no longer have a free will. They lost it. They gave it up. They can no longer choose. They become slaves. He said, but when you go to heaven, you have a free will. But you won't need it. Because everything you ever desired that has been created in you will be fulfilled, overflowing far above all you could ever ask or even think. And I wanted to know why he was bringing me to this. And he said, I want you to have a reality of life. Life itself. And he says, my people have lost reality of this. The reality of life itself. See, people get so caught up in life that they lose the reality of life, of existence. In other words, he said, I created you out of love. That is the source of my creation. He said, but I want to bring my people back to the reality of life in the area of new life. In this place of new life where you and I were given a, a life to reach a new life. So you and I were sent into this world from life itself. So that we could become trained and prepared to move on into life that was originally designated and created of its, his purpose and of his will. And I began to see the whole universe and everything that was created upheld in his presence. And he said, I'm the be beginning and the end, and there will be an end of this. He said, but I want you to think I want you to see that even though that there's a universe with a beginning and an end, try to fathom no limitations, endlessness. You know, when we get into a room, we have a tendency to see how much room there is. <laughs> and the more people that are in that room, it seems to be more crowded. And then we look at a city or a town where there's overpopulated and people are living in the streets and so forth. And, and then you drive out to the country and you see all of this open land and go, oh my gosh, there's so much more room for people to live. And then there's another place that there's so much room beyond the universe. Oh, God is raising up leaders of his kingdom. And this is just a place of go through for training. The spirit wants us to begin to live more from the future than the past. 
And until there is a more living from the future, the, the reality of life gets compromised. And I can sense the joyfulness of the Spirit as he was expressing these things to me, then I can sense the grieving of him and the area where the lack of the reality of this gift. It's an awesome, awesome gift of life. You know, I'll never forget when I was out there abusing myself. And... Uh, as I was in a room and getting high and whatever, and and I I knew I was a, abusing this life and taking it for granted. And off in the corner in this room, there was two people talking. But they weren't people. They were angelic. And one was saying to the other, "Look what he's doing with his life." Look at what he's doing with his life. Man, that ripped right through me. It never left me. It took me a year to finally come out of it and make the right choice. But that stayed with me all the time. What am I doing with this life? You know, for each and every one of us, every day, and, and at some point at a time, it's the Holy Spirit's always quickening us, trying to bring us back to this what are you doing with this life I've given you? What are you doing with this life I've given you? You know, so many times we have a tendency to waste time. Wasting life away. And in this, I believe that the Spirit's just trying to bring us to an area of not only gratefulness, but great appreciation of this creation that you and I are. He was in Christ as a new creation. In other words, we are a new life form. We're no longer the same life form we used to be. We're a brand new life form connected to heaven, to the future. I mean, if you think about life itself, it's living in future eternity. Think about that. Living in future eternity. Life. Living in future eternity. Think about that. Just living in future. That's what life is. Why? Because life came from eternity. Into the present now. You know, when I had my visitation from the Lord, it was almost the first thing that I saw was dots. And every dot was a human being on this planet. And it was, there was, and, and as these, as I saw these dots, do you ever see those puzzles with lines going to them and you have to make the picture? And I began to see lines going to them all over. Boom, boom, boom. And it was like, because we all came from the same blood. Amen? We all came from the same source. And we're all going back. Even the word says that he's going to gather from other folds. Those who he's created. They may be other life forms. I don't know. But there's still a life form. From came as the originator from him. The creator of all life. And without Jesus there really is no life. It's a temporary thing here. And so many people sell out their inheritance for moments, pleasures in this temporary life and not maintaining that place of reality, of attitude, of gratitude, of the new life that he's given me and you. And I believe that we're going to begin to see more and more things begin to escalate in this area of life itself, of God's new creation. See, the world doesn't understand these things. That's why they abort. That's why they promote abortion. Because they don't acknowledge, they don't realize the reality of life. 
and some many uh, uh, individuals that are Christians now have aborted prior in BC, but now realize that what they had done was murder, and have repented and turned, and now fighting for life instead of trying to kill it. But life is a gift from the life giver. And it's an area to where we need to become more aware, more sensitive of this life that God has given us. Reality of life, Acts 17. Oh, hallelujah. In other words, we need to make this real. <laughs> Acts chapter 17. I also believe that we need to treat life a little bit more differently than how it's been treated. In verse 22, it says, And Paul stood in the midst of the Areopagus and said, Men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you are very religious. For as I was passing through and considering the objects of your worship, I even found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God. Therefore, the one whom you worship without knowing him, I proclaim to you. God who made the world and everything in it, since he is Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made with what? Made with what? Hands. Glory. Let's speak this together. Verse 26. And he has made from one blood every nation of men who dwell on all the face of the earth and has determined their pre-appointed times and boundaries of their dwellings. So that they should seek the Lord in hope that they might grope for him and find him. Though he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. As also some of your own poets have said. For we are, all, are also his what? Offsprings. Therefore since we are the offspring of God. We ought not to think that the divine nature is like gold or silver or stone, something shaped by art and man's devising. Truly, these times of ignorance God overlooked, but now commands all men everywhere to what? Repent. Because he has appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has ordained. He has given assurance of this to all by raising him from the dead. And when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked and others said, well, we will hear you again on this matter. Again, he is the life giver. It says he gives life and breath. He would, that they would, he would hope that they would grow up, seek him, find. In other words, find out who created you. Look for the one who created you. We breathe, move, and exist in his presence. There is a universal environment. Amen? So I want to look at life tonight as living in future environment, which we call eternity. Now, if you begin to look at the kingdom of God, that is an environment. Again, we breathe and move and exist in his presence. It is a universal environment of existence with a beginning and an end. In John chapter 1. John chapter 1. Reality of life. Living in future environment. John 
John 1 and verse 1. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Grab hold of something. The Word is called substance. Everyone say substance. The Word is the substance of all creation. The Word of God, the Word, is the substance of all creation. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God, the substance of all creation. All things were made through Him, the Word. And without the Word, Him, nothing was made that was made. In Him was what? Life. And the life was the light of men. And the light shines in darkness, and darkness did not comprehend it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all through him might believe or follow. He was not the light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which gives light to every man coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him. And the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word, the substance, became flesh, and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. In other words, full of his plan of escape. Amen. Again, the word is the substance of all creation. When he says, so you have the substance of all creation. So when he makes something, I didn't say create. What he takes is the substance of his creation. So when he wants to create something, he creates the substance first. Then he takes it and he forms it. That's what's called make, made. Does everybody understand? So when God creates, so when we hear create, so you and I are a new creation in Christ Jesus. In other words, the substance has been reformed. That's why he says do not be conform to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Okay, so we've got to begin to think from the future to the presence now. There's a whole different arena, a whole different realm that you, are, you and I are walking away from and walking into. So creation, in other words, this podium was made of plastic. Somebody had to create the plastic, the substance, and then assemble it. Wow, it produces water. And, and then assemble it, that means to be made. So you and I are from a substance of creation informed, amen, as a new creation in Christ Jesus with a new life. So in the word of substance is life itself. In, in the word that he said, which is the substance of all creation, is life. It is the light of men, the light of creation is unattainable or cannot be understood or comprehended while a person is still in darkness. There's no comprehension of new creation. They can't grab hold of that. It, it's hard. They can't comprehend it while they're still in darkness. So when a person backslides and goes back into darkness, they lost that. It's stolen. The reality, well, you know, when you begin to think about this, it's your identity. So your identity is, is a new creation in Christ because you are 
born again, not of the world, of the blood. You are born again of the future. You have actually a real, true life forever now, not a temporary one. You are life in you. When you think about when it says, uh, Jesus said, repent for behold the kingdom of God is upon you. What was he bringing? The environment. And then he says, don't look in the desert anywhere because the kingdom of God isn't out there. It's in you. Why? Because we are now the environment that life Living in the future environment is now in me and you. Now we are a substance because it was lost in the garden. So he created his own temple in an individual being. Does everybody get this? Hallelujah. I hope so. <laughs> Praise God. So the creator of the substance of light was made, remember he was... He became flesh. He was made or formed like a human to bring the truth, light, and reality of life and life giver in hope that life form of mankind might choose to accept the escape of darkness and to the light of the Savior of the new created, a new creation in the new kingdom, which is the life kingdom. Again, there is no life without a creator of life. No matter what you look at, there is a creator. So people who try to say, well, I'm, I'm an atheist. Well, they're idiots. Then, then where did you come from? Oh, I came from an amoeba or whatever. They may act like one. But then who created that? Oh, I came from a plasma. Well, who created that? I came from a moron. Well, who created that? You know, that was your choice, not his. <laughs> Hallelujah. Anyways, Hebrews 10. Hebrew 10. Again, there is no life without a creator of life. Amen? Oh, happy days. In verse 5. Everybody there, let's speak it. Therefore, when he came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a what? A body you have prepared for me. And burnt offering and sacrifices for sin. You had no pleasure. Then I said, Behold, I have come into the volume of the book it is written of me to do your will, O God. Previously saying, sacrifice and offering, burnt offerings and offerings for sin you did not desire, nor had pleasure in them which are offered according to the law. Then he said, Behold, I have come to do your will, O God. He takes away the first that he may establish the second. By that we will have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus the Christ once for all. And every priest stands ministering daily, offering repeatedly the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. But this man, this new creation, this creative being, eternal being, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down at the right hand of God, from that time waiting till his enemies are made his footstool. By one offering, he has perfected forever those who are being what? Sanctified. But the Holy Spirit also witnessing to us, for after he had said before, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord, I will put my what? My laws, my words, my ways in their hearts and in their minds, I will write them. Then he says, their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. Now where there is remission... 
of these there is no longer an offering for sin. Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest, holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he sanctified for us through the veil that is his flesh, and having the high priest forever, the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as it is a manner of some, but exhorting one another and so much more as you see the day approaching. In other words, the Spirit of God formed a body to hold the life of creation, the creator of life. Amen. Now this life is living in the future environment. Jesus brought the eternal environment with him. That's why, again, he said, behold, the kingdom of God is at hand. It is the environment from the future called the eternal kingdom. It's called the kingdom of God. Life is living in the future environment. That's why you and I have new life because the kingdom of God is within us. In John chapter 3. Glory. Reality of life. John three three. Let's speak it together. Jesus answered and said to him, So surely I say to you, unless one is what? Born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now, this is wild. Why? Because being born again is being born from the future now, isn't it? Life, in other words, we are living in future environment. Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. In other words, he's saying, listen, you must become a new creation. This is an eternal kingdom. You must become brand new. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So it's everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said to him, How can this be? Jesus answered and said to him, Are you a teacher of Israel and you don't know these things? I would call that a rebuke. Most assuredly I say to you, We speak what we know and testify what we have seen, and you do not receive our witness. If I told you earthly things and you do not believe, how will you believe if I tell you heavenly things? Powerful. Again, the kingdom of God is the eternal environment. It's the future environment. Those that are dark and disconnected to the reality of life hate the light. Why? Because it exposes their intent. Watch. Let's go a little further. Verse 13, no one has ascended to heaven, but he who came down from heaven, that is the Son of Man who is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so the Son, must, son of Man must be lifted up. That would, whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world, to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten of God. And this is the condemnation that is the light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. 
For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light, that his deeds may be clearly seen, and that they may have been done in God. Very powerful. Again, why? Because they're still in darkness. They don't want to come to the light because they'll be exposed. But you got to remember that darkness can't comprehend these things. And this is where the enemy comes and steals. The first thing he comes to steal is your identity. Your identity as a new creation of Christ living from the future, having a brand new life. Life. Brand new life. The reality of new life that God has given me and you. That we should not live it in vain. That we should not take advantage of this life. That we should be grateful and thankful and have the reality that we have a new life and that we are temporary in this realm but eternal in the other. Amen? And Genesis chapter 2. Reality of life. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 1. Is everybody there? Thus the heavens and the earth and all the hosts of them were finished. And on the seventh day God ended his work which he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had done. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because in it he rested from all his work, which God had created and made. Created and made. Created and made. In other words, what did he do? He created substance, and he formed it together. That's called made. In verse 4, this is the history of the heavens and the earth when they were created. In the day that God, the Lord God, made the earth and the heavens. So he created the substance, and then he made the earth and the heavens. Before any plant of the field was in the earth, and before any herb of the field had grown, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain on the earth, and there was no man to till the ground. But a mist went up from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. And he breathed into his nostrils the breath of what? Life. And the man became a living, eternal being. Remember, Adam was created to be eternal. He didn't have any blood. He was spirit, bone and body. Amen? Does everybody understand that? There was no blood. Because the life of the flesh was in the blood, but he didn't need the life of the flesh being in the blood. The life of his flesh was in the spirit. It was eternal. And then the Lord God planted a what? A garden. That's called an environment. Eastward in Eden. And there he put the man whom he had formed. Remember, to create his substance, and then he takes what he substance and forms it. So now he takes the cr new creation, this eternal being we call Adam, and he put him in a place of his kingdom in an environment where there was eternal. He placed him in an environment so he could be trained and learn. See, you don't know good and evil if you don't know righteousness. You don't know what pleases God if you don't know what displeases God. Does everybody understand? So, you know, people go, well, why are we going through all this stuff? Because we're supposed to learn this stuff. Does everybody get it? I mean, if you just knew what love was all the time, would you ever know what hate was? No, then you won't really know what love is. Is everybody all right? Hallelujah. Okay, in verse 9. And out of the ground the Lord God made every tree grow that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. 
The tree of life was also in the midst of the garden, and a tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So we see here that the garden was an environment that God created for his new creation. This new life form. Everyone say, I'm a new life form. <laughs> Hallelujah. So the creative substance from nothing was to be used to form or make, uh, make his new creation planted in a new environment formed by God from the created substance and gave life living in the future environment. In this environment, God would have fellowship with his new created life. There would become a relationship between creation formed from creator, from life giver to life. There'd be a relationship from life giver to life, life giver to life, life giver to life. Again, in this, uh, uh, the process as well as good and evil and righteousness. That's why the tree was in there, the presence. So we were a predestined life form to be formed into his image and likeness. Amen? The Word of God says that Adam was made in his image and likeness. Eve was not. She was made in the image of Adam. Amen? And no one else has been. The only thing that you and I are close, we were close of his image and likeness was we are a triune being, spirit, soul, and body. Amen? Other than that, we were not really. That was the only part of his image, but we weren't in his likeness. Because I don't think he liked us, B.C. <laughs> he loved us, but he didn't like us. <laughs> but after becoming a new creation in Christ as a new life form, we are now created in his image and likeness. Amen? So again, in this, <laughs> we were predestined life form in his image with justice and righteousness and uh, as a character, his created abilities he's given us for me and you, calling those things that are not as though they are. So now you and I are co-laborers with the creator. Amen? As a new life form. Bringing the reality of really life itself. Living in a future environment right now. Right now, in me and you, is an eternal future environment. Amen? Called the kingdom of God. Ephesians 3. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 3. Hallelujah. In verse 3. Something like that. Oh, verse 1, sorry. 3, 1. For this reason I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus, for you Gentiles, if indeed you had heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which was given to me for you, how that by revelation he made known to me the mystery as I have briefly written already, by which when you read you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men as it has been revealed by the Spirit to his holy apostles and prophets, that the Gentiles should be what? Fellow heirs, of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ through the gospel, which I became a minister according to the gift of grace of God given to me by the effective working of his power. To me who am least than the least of all the saints, this grace was given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ to make all see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the ages has been hidden in God, who created all things through who? Jesus Christ, known as the Word. He is the substance. In the intent that 
now the manifold wisdom of God might be made known by the church to the principalities and powers in the heavenly places according to the eternal purpose which he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence through faith in him. Therefore I ask that you do not lose heart at my tribulations for you which is your glory. For this reason I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family is in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with the might through his spirit in the inner man, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, and that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to what? Comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that God may be filled with all the fullness, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God, the fullness of God. The fullness of God. And it's a mystery of salvation. That the new life form was granted escape from darkness. Amen? The old life form of darkness. Through Christ, Jesus, again, is the substance of all creation. John 10. Reality of life. It says, The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy, but I have come that they may what? Have life and have it what? More abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. But a harling who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. The hireling flees because he is a hireling and does not care about the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know my sheep and am known by my own. As the Father knows me, even so I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have which are not of this fold... In other words, other life forms that I have are not of this fold. Them I also I must bring, and they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock and one shepherd. Therefore, my Father loves me because I lay down my life, that I may take it again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment I have received from my Father. Again, life living in future environment, new life, more. In other words, when it, there's an arena where he says, I come to bring life, but more abundantly, it's about knowing more of who you are and who he is and who you are in him, where you are increasing your identity, where you are expanding your identity, not becoming something else, but the reality of your identity of who you really are as this new life form. Everybody okay? Psalm 24. Psalm 24. Is everybody okay? Hallelujah. Is everybody there? Anybody there? Oh, happy day. Verse 1, the earth is the Lord and all its fullness, the world and those who dwell in therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord? In other words, his presence. Or who may stand in his holy place? He who has what? Clean hands and a pure heart. So these are requirements. These are requirements of maintaining your new life form. He who has clean hands and a pure heart. Why? Because without his presence, you can't exist. Does everybody understand that? Your new life form cannot exist without his presence. 
He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to an idol, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is Jacob, the generation of those who what? Seek him, who seek your face. Lift up your heads, O you gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, you gates, lift up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. These are requirements to maintain this position. Amen? Does everybody understand it? Clean hands, pure heart. You haven't lifted a no emotional idols. No lying, deceitfulness. These are just areas. Seekers. Are you a seeker? Are you a seeker of his face? These are all requirements in Psalm 16. Verse 1, let's speak it together. Preserve me, O God, for in you I what? I put my trust. O my soul, you have said to the Lord, you are my Lord. My goodness is nothing apart from you. As for the saints who are on the earth, they are the excellent ones, in whom is all my delight. Their sorrow shall be multiplied who hasten after another God. The drink offerings of blood I will not offer, nor take up their names on my lips. O oh Lord, you are the portion of my inheritance of my cup. You maintain my lot. The lions have fallen to me in pleasant places. Yes, I have a good inheritance. I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. My heart also instructs me in the night seasons. I will set the Lord where? Always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Therefore, my heart is glad, my glory rejoices, my flesh also will rest in hope. For you will not leave my soul in hell, nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. You will show me the what? Path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy, and at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. So you, do you understand? He said, you will show me the path of life. You will show me the process. You will show me this path of this life, living in future environment. You will show me this eternal path. And then he says, in your presence is fullness of joy. Why? Because without his presence, you and I cannot maintain. We are a new life form. We've got to begin to see ourselves totally different than what we used to. Do not let the mirror dictate who you are. Amen? In Ephesians 2. Do not let your mistakes dictate who you are. Amen? Do not allow your successes to dictate who you are. <laughs> That's why he says, I set the Lord before me. Why? Because there should be a reflection all the time. Ephesians 2, verse 1. And you, he what? And who is, who is he? Jesus, amen. And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath just as the others. But God who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with who? Christ, by grace you've been saved by his plan. And raised us up together, made us sit together where? In heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That's a whole new environment. That in the ages to come he might show his exceeding riches and his grace and his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you've been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a what? Gift of God. Not of works, lest anyone should boast. 
For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should what? Walk in them. Colossians 3. Colossians 3 and verse 1. Reality of life. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are where? Above. Where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind, your thoughts above, not on the things of the earth. For you died in your life is where? Hidden with Christ in God. Now think about that. Your life is hidden with, in Christ. Remember, we live and have our being in Him. Amen? His whole presence upholds everything. But there's multiple levels of environment. There's a multiple levels of His presence also. Amen? So in this, you and I, are, our life, our connection, life to life, Life giver to life is hidden in him. So you and I are already hidden in him. And I mean, sometimes it's hard for us to comprehend that. But until that reality comes about life and who we are and our identity in him is who he is, as we are his offsprings, little Christ, at least it ain't a little devil no more, you know. <laughs> it says this, verse 4, when Christ who is our life appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. Therefore put to death your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desires, covetousness, which is idolatry, addiction, and all the other stuff. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience, whether you pray, proclaim to be a Christian or not in which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. But now you yourselves are to what? Put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth, and don't lie to one another since you have put off the old man or the old life with his deeds and put on the new man with his new life who is renewed in the knowledge according to the image of him who created him. Where there's neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave nor free, but Christ is all and in all. We are hidden in Him. First John chapter one. Hallelujah. First John chapter one. Verse 1. Let's speak it. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled, concerning the word of life. Now, the creation of life. Think about this. The creation of life. Remember, the word is known as the what? Substance, which was always creation. That's how God created. He creates substance and then forms it together. The life, did God create life? Yes. The life was manifested and we have seen and bear witness and declared to you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested to us. That which we have seen and heard, we declare to you that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus the Christ. These things we write to you that your joy may be what? Full. In other words, they're writing because he's hoping that they would comprehend these things. The word of creation and life giver. Life was manifested, living in the future environment with fellowship. We are the kingdom of God now. And I'm going to close it, chapter 5. In verse 18. 
reality of life. It's precious. In verse 18, let's speak it. We know that whoever is born of God does not what? Sin. But he who has been born of God keeps himself. And the wicked one does not touch him. We know that we are of God and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. And we know that the Son of God has come and given us an understanding that we may know him who is true and we are in him who is true. In his Son Jesus Christ as a new creation in Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols that would get you out of position. Amen? Remember, there's a battle for position all the time. The enemy sets traps, trying to get us to sow in the flesh, so we reap corruption. Always trying to get us off course. But in his presence, if we set the Lord before us all the time, we will be directed in the right path, the path of life, willing to repent for stupid mistakes, amen, and get back right in position so we can continue forward and maintaining our true reality of who we are and our true identity as a new life form in Christ Jesus, amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask, Lord, that you protect this revelation and impartation in each and every one of us. And Holy Spirit, quicken us as who we are in you, in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory.